the obstacles to connecting to intention. I love this following passage from William Blake's The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. It's the basis of this chapter about overcoming obstacles to the unlimited power of intention. Here's what he said, quote, Does a firm persuasion that a thing is so make it so? He replied, All poets believe that it does. And in ages of imagination, this firm persuasion removes mountains. But many are not capable of a firm persuasion of anything, unquote. William Blake is telling us that poets have an inexhaustible imagination and consequently an unlimited ability to make something so. He also reminds us that many aren't capable of such a firm persuasion. In the previous chapter, I gave you suggestions for making positive connections to intention. I'm devoting this entire chapter to three areas that may be unrecognized obstacles to your connection to this power of intention. You're going to be examining your inner speech, your level of energy, and your self-importance or ego. These three categories can create almost insurmountable blocks to connecting to intention when they're mismatched. Taken one at a time, you'll have the opportunity to become aware of these blockages and explore ways of overcoming them. There's a game show that has aired on television for several decades now in syndication. It's called The Match Game. The object of this game is to match up your thoughts and potential responses with that of someone on your team, usually a partner or a family member. A question or statement is given to one partner and several possible responses are offered. The more matches made in competition with two other couples, the more points received. The winner is the one with the most matches. I'd like to play the match game with you. Here's my version. I'm asking you to match up with the universal spirit of intention. As we go through the three categories of obstacles that hinder your connection to intention, I'll describe the areas that don't match and offer some suggestions for creating a match. Remember that your ability to activate the power of intention in your life depends exclusively on your matching up with the creative source of all life. Match up with that source and you win the prize of being like the source and the power of intention. Fail to match up and the power of intention eludes you. Your inner speech. Match or no match? We can go all the way back to the Old Testament to find a reminder about our inner dialogue. For instance, as a man thinketh, so is he. Generally, we apply this idea of becoming what we think about to our positive thoughts. That is, think positively and you'll produce positive results. But thinking also creates stumbling blocks that produce negative results. What follows are four ways of thinking that can prevent you from reaching for and connecting to the universal creative spirit of intention. First, thinking about what's missing in your life. To match up with intention, you first have to catch yourself in the moment that you're thinking about what's missing, and then shift to intention. Not what I find missing in my life, but to what I absolutely intend to manifest and attract into my life, with no doubts, no waffling, and no explaining. Here are some suggestions I'm going to offer you to help you to break the habit of focusing your thoughts on what's missing. Play a version of the match game and match up with the all-creating force. Here's a no match. I don't have enough money. Here's a match. I intend to attract unlimited abundance into my life. Here's a no match. My partner is grouchy and boring. Here's a match. I intend to focus my thoughts on what I love about my partner. Here's a no match. I'm not as attractive as I'd like to be. Here's a match. I'm perfect in the eyes of God, a divine manifestation of the process of creation. This isn't a game of empty affirmations. It's a way of matching yourself to the power of intention and recognizing that what you think about is what expands. If you spend your time thinking about what's missing, then that's what expands in your life. Monitor your inner dialogue and match your thoughts to what you want and intend to create. Here's a second way of thinking. Thinking about the circumstances of your life. If you don't like some of the circumstances of your life, by all means, don't think about them. This may sound like a paradox to you. In this match game, you want to match up with the spirit of creation. You must train your imagination, which is the universal mind running through you, to shift from what you don't want to what you do want. All of that mental energy you spend complaining about what is, to anyone who will listen, is a magnet for attracting more of it into your life. You, and only you, can overcome this impediment because you've put it on your path to intention. Simply change your inner speech to what you intend the new circumstances of your life to become. Practice thinking from the end by playing the match game and by realigning yourself with the field of intention. Here's a few examples of a no match versus a match for what is inner dialogue about the circumstances of your life. No match. 
I hate this place we're living in. It gives me the creeps. Match. I can see our new home in my mind, and I intend to be living in it within six months. No match. I dislike the work I'm doing and the fact that I'm not appreciated. Match. I'll act upon my inner intuitive impulses to create the work or job of my dreams. No match. I hate the fact that I'm sick so often and always seem to be getting colds. Match. I am divine health. I intend to act in healthy ways and attract the power to strengthen my immune system in every way I can. See, you must learn to assume responsibility for the circumstances of your life without any accompanying guilt. The circumstances of your life aren't the way they are because of karmic debt or because you're being punished. The circumstances of your life, including your health, are yours. Somehow they showed up in your life, so just assume that you participated in all of it. Your inner speech is uniquely your own creation and it's responsible for attracting more of the circumstances that you don't want. Link up with intention. Use your inner speech to stay focused on what you intend to create, and you'll find yourself regaining the power of your source. Three, another way of thinking is thinking about what always has been, which is an obstacle. When your inner speech focuses on the way things have always been, you act upon your thoughts of what's always been, and the universal all-creating force continues to deliver what always has been. Why? Because your imagination is a part of that which imagined you into existence. It's the force of creation, and you're using it to work against you with your inner speech. Imagine the absolute spirit thinking like this. I can't create life anymore because things haven't worked for me in the past. There have been so many mistakes in the past, and I can't stop thinking about them. How much creating do you think would occur if spirit imagined in this way? How can you possibly connect to the power of intention if your thoughts, which are responsible for your intending, focus on all that's gone before you, which you abhor? The answer is obvious, and so is the solution. Make a shift and catch yourself when you're focusing on what always has been and move your inner speech to what you intend to manifest. You'll get points in this match game by being on the same team as the absolute spirit. Here's a no match. I've always been poor. I was raised on shortages and scarcity. Here's a match. I intend to attract wealth and prosperity in unlimited abundance. Here's a no match. We've always fought in this relationship. Here's a match. I'll work at being peaceful and not allowing anyone to bring me down. Here's a no match. My children have never shown me any respect. Here's a match. I intend to teach my children to respect all of life and I'll treat them in the same way. The match items reflect a rapport with the originating spirit. The no match statements represent interference that you've constructed to keep you from matching up with intention. Any thought that takes you backward is an impediment to manifesting desires. The highest functioning people understand that if you don't have a story, you don't have to live up to it. So get rid of any parts of your story that keep you focused on what always has been. And finally, a fourth way of thinking that's an obstacle to connecting to intention is this, thinking about what they want for you. There's probably a long list of people, most of them relatives, who have strong ideas about what you should be doing, how you should be thinking and worshiping, where you should be living, how you should be scheduling your life, and how much of your time you should be spending with them, especially on special occasions and holidays. Our definition of friendship, thankfully, excludes the manipulation and guilt that we so often put up with in our families. Practice catching yourself when you have a thought of what others want for you and ask yourself, does this expectation match up with my own? If not, simply laugh at the absurdity of being upset or frustrated over the expectations of others about how you should be running your life. This is a way to match up and become impervious to the criticisms of others and simultaneously put a stop to the insidious practice of continuing to attract into your life something you don't want. Here's a few match, no match opportunities to observe here. A no match. I'm so annoyed with my family, they just don't understand me and they never have. Match. I love my family. They don't see things my way, but I don't expect them to. I'm totally focused on my own intentions and I send them. Here's a no match. I make myself sick trying to please everyone. Here's a match. I'm on purpose and doing what I signed up to do in this lifetime. Here's a no match. I feel so unappreciated by those I serve that it sometimes makes me cry. Here's a match. I do what I do because it's my purpose and my destiny is to do so. A second obstacle is called your level of energy. Match or no match. Everything in this universe is a movement of energy. 
higher, faster energy dissolves and converts lower and slower energy. With this in mind, I'd like you to consider yourself and all of your thoughts in the context of being an energy system. That's right. You are an energy system, not just a system of bones and fluids and cells, but actually a multitude of energy systems encapsulating an inner energy system of thoughts, feelings, and emotions. This energy system that you are can be measured and calibrated. Every thought you have can be energetically calibrated along with its impact on your body and your environment. The higher your energy, the more capable you are of nullifying and converting lower energies, which weaken you and impacting in a positive way everyone in your immediate and even distant surroundings. The objective in this section is to become aware of your own energy level and the actual frequencies of thought that you regularly employ in daily life. You can become proficient at raising your energy level and permanently obliterate energetic expressions that weaken or inhibit your connection to intention. Ultimately, your goal is to have a perfect match with the highest frequency of all. Here's a simple explanation of the five levels of energy that you work with, moving from the lowest and slowest frequencies to the highest and the fastest. The slowest energy, number one, the material world. Solid form is energy slowed down so that it's approximately commensurate with your sense perception of the world of boundaries. Everything that you see and touch is energy slowed down so that it appears to be a coalesced mass. Your eyes and your fingers agree, and here you have the physical world. The second level of energy is called the sound world, a little faster energy. You seldom perceive sound waves with your eyes, but they can actually be felt. These invisible waves are also high, low, and fast and slow. This sound level of energy is where you connect to the highest frequencies of spirit through the practice of Japa meditation, as I've written about extensively in Getting in the Gap, which includes a CD to teach you this meditation. The third level of energy is called the light world. Light moves faster than the material world and faster than sound, yet there are no actual particles to form a substance called light. What you see as red is what your eye perceives a certain pulsating frequency to be, and what you perceive as violet is an even faster and higher frequency. When light is brought to darkness, darkness becomes light. The implications for this are startling. Low energy, when faced with high energy experiences, an automatic conversion. A fourth level of energy is called the world of thought. Your thoughts, your actual thoughts, are an extremely high frequency of pulsation that move beyond the speed of sound and even light. The frequency of thoughts can be measured and the impact that they have on your body and your environment can be actually calculated. Once again, the same rules apply. Higher frequencies nullify lower. Faster energies convert slower. A colleague I admire enormously, David Hawkins, a medical doctor, has written a work which I've referenced over and over again called Power vs. Force. In this remarkable book, Dr. Hawkins elaborates on the lower frequencies of thought and their accompanying emotions and how they can be impacted and converted by exposure to higher and faster frequencies. I really urge you to read this book, and I'll present some of those findings in the later sections on this program on how to raise your energy levels. Every thought you have can be calculated to determine if it's strengthening or weakening your ability to reconnect to the highest and fastest energy in the universe the energy of intention. And finally, the highest and fastest energy in the universe. It's called the energy of spirit. This is the ultimate in energy. These frequencies are so supersonically rapid that the presence of disorder, disharmony, and even disease is impossible. These measurable energies consist of the seven faces of intention talked about earlier in this program. They are the energies of creation, when you reproduce them in yourself, you reproduce the same creative quality of life that called you into existence. They are the qualities of creativeness, of kindness, of love, of beauty, of expansion, of peaceful abundance and receptivity to all. These are the highest energies of the universal spirit itself. You came into existence from this energy and you can match up with it energetically as you remove all of the low energy pulsations from your thoughts and feelings. Raising your energy level. There's a vibratory action to your thoughts, your feelings, and your body. I'm asking you to increase those frequencies so they're high enough to allow you to connect to the power of intention. This may sound like an oversimplification, but I hope you'll try raising your energy level as a way to remove the obstacles that prevent you from experiencing the perfection that you're a part of. You cannot remedy anything by condemning it. Again, you cannot remedy anything by condemning it. Underline that in your consciousness. 
you only add to the destructive energy that's already permeating the atmosphere of your life. When you react to the lower energies you encounter with your own low energies, you're actually setting up a situation that attracts more of the lower energy. For example, if someone behaves in a hateful manner toward you and you respond by hating them for hating you, you've participated in a lower energy field and impacting all who enter that field. If you're angry at those around you for being angry people, you're attempting to remedy the situation through condemnation. If you're experiencing scarcity or anguish or depression or an absence of love or any inability to attract what you desire, seriously look at how you've been attracting those circumstances into your life. Low energy is an attractor pattern. It shows up because you've sent for it, even if on a subconscious level. It's still yours and you own it. However, if you practice deliberately raising your energy level by being cognizant of your immediate environment, You'll move more rapidly toward intention and remove all of those self-imposed roadblocks. The obstacles are in the low energy spectrum. What follows is a mini program for raising your energy vibrations. Here's a short list of suggestions for moving your energy field to a higher and a faster vibration. This will help you to accomplish the twofold objective of removing the barriers and simultaneously allowing the power of intention to work with and through you. Become conscious of your thoughts. Every thought you have impacts you. By shifting in the middle of a weakening thought to one that strengthens, you raise your energy vibration and strengthen yourself and the immediate energy field. Make meditation a regular practice in your life. Even if it's only for a few moments each day while sitting at a stoplight, this practice is vital. Take some time to be silent and repeat the sound of God as an inner mantra. Meditation allows you to make conscious contact with your source and regain the power of intention by assisting you in cultivating a receptivity that matches up with the force of creation. Also, become conscious of the food you eat. There are foods that calibrate low and there are high energy foods as well. Foods with toxic chemicals sprayed on them will make you weak even if you have no idea that the toxins are present. Artificial foods such as sweeteners are low energy products. In general, foods high in alkalinity such as fruits, vegetables, nuts, soy, non-yeast breads and virgin olive oil calibrate at the high end and will strengthen you on muscle testing, while highly acidic foods such as flour-based cereals, meats, dairy and sugars calibrate at the lower energies which will weaken you. Also, retreat from low energy substances. Alcohol and virtually all artificial drugs, legal and otherwise, lower your body's energy level as well as weaken you. Furthermore, they put you in a position to continue to attract more disempowering energy into your life. Become conscious of the energy level of the music you listen to. Harsh, pounding musical vibrations with repetitive, loud sounds lower your energy level and weaken you and your ability to make conscious contact with intention. Similarly, the lyrics of hate, pain, anguish, fear, and violence are low energy sending weakening messages to your subconscious and infiltrating your life with similar attractor energies. If you want to attract peace and love, then listen to the higher musical vibrations and lyrics that reflect these desires. Furthermore, become aware of the energy levels of your own home environment. Prayers, paintings, crystals, statues, spiritual passages, books, magazines, the colors on your walls, and even the arrangement of your furniture all create energy into which you've catapulted for at least half of your waking life. The ancient Chinese art of Feng Shui has been with us for thousands of years and is a gift from our ancestors which describes ways to increase the energy field of our home and workplace. Become aware of how being in high energy surroundings impacts us in ways that strengthen our lives and removes barriers to our connection to intention. Also, begin to reduce your exposure to the very low energy of commercial and cable television. The majority of television shows provide a steady stream of low energy most of the time. This is one of the reasons I've elected to devote a significant portion of my own time and efforts in support of non-commercial public television and to help replace messages of negativity, hopelessness, violence, profanity, and disrespect with the higher principles that match up with the principle of intention. You can also enhance your energy field with photographs, believe it or not. 
You may find it difficult to believe that photography is a form of energy reproduction and that every photograph contains energy. See for yourself by strategically placing photographs taken in moments of happiness, love, and receptivity to spiritual help around your living quarters, in your workplace, in your automobile, and even on your clothing or in your pocket or in your wallet. Arrange photographs of nature, animals, and expressions of joy and love in your environment and let their energy radiate into your heart and provide you with their higher frequencies. You can also become conscious of the energy levels of your acquaintances and your friends and your extended family. You can raise your own energy levels by being in the energy field of others who resonate closely to spiritual consciousness. Choose to be in close proximity to people who are empowering, who appeal to your sense of connection to intention, who see the greatness in you, who feel connected to God, and who live a life that gives evidence that spirit has found celebration through you. You can also begin to monitor your activities and where they take place. Avoid low energy fields where there's excessive alcohol, drug consumption, or violent behavior, and gatherings where religious or ethnic exclusion and vitriolic prejudice or judgments are the focus. Immerse yourself in nature, appreciating its beauty, spending time camping, hiking, swimming, taking nature walks, and reveling in the natural world. Attend lectures on spirituality, take a yoga class, give or receive a massage, visit monasteries or meditation centers, and commit to helping others in need with visits to the elderly in geriatric centers or sick children in hospitals. Choose to be in places where the energy fields reflect the seven faces of intention. Extend acts of kindness asking for nothing in return. Anonymously extend financial aid to those less fortunate and do it from the kindness of your heart expecting not even a thank you. Pick up some litter and place it in a proper receptacle and tell no one about your actions. In fact, Spend several hours doing nothing but cleaning and clearing out messes that you didn't create. Any act of kindness extended toward yourself, others, or your environment matches you up with the kindness inherent in the universal power of intention. It's an energizer for you and causes this kind of energy to flow back into your life. Be specific when you affirm your intentions to raise your energy level and create your desires. Written affirmations have an energy of their own and will guide you in raising your energy level. I practice this myself. There's a woman named Lynn Hall who lives up in Toronto. She sent me a beautiful plaque that I look at every day. In her letter, she says, Here's a gift for you, written solely for you in an effort to convey heartfelt gratitude for the blessings of your presence in my life. That said, I'm sure that the sentiment is a universal one speaking for every other soul on the planet who has experienced the same good fortune. May the light and love that you emit forever reflect back to you in joyful abundance, Dr. Dyer. And the beautiful etched-in soul plaque reads like this. Spirit has found great voice in you in vibrant truths and joyful splendor. Spirit has found revelation through you in resonant and reflective ways. Spirit has found celebration through you in infinite expanses and endless reach. To all those awakened to the grace of your gifts, Spirit has found both wings and light. I read these words daily to remind me of my connection to Spirit and to allow the words to flow from my heart to yours, fulfilling my intentions and hopefully helping you to do the same. As frequently as possible, hold thoughts of forgiveness in your mind. In muscle testing, when you hold a thought of revenge, you'll go weak, while a thought of forgiveness keeps you strong. Revenge, anger, and hatred are exceedingly low energies that keep you from matching up with the attributes of the universal force. A simple thought of forgiveness toward anyone who may have angered you in the past, without any action taken on your part, will raise you to the level of spirit and aid you in your individual intentions. What follows is the final obstacle to making your connections to intention. Your self-importance, or your ego. In The Fire From Within, a book written by Carlos Castaneda, he hears these words from his sorcerer teacher, and they go like this. Quote, Self-importance is man's greatest enemy. What weakens him is feeling offended by the deeds and misdeeds of his fellow man. Self-importance requires that one spend most of one's life offended by something or someone. Unquote. This is a major impediment to connecting to intention. You can all too easily create a no match here. Basically, your feelings of self-importance are what make you feel special. So let's deal with this concept of being special. It's essential that you have a strong self-concept and that you feel unique. The problem is when you misidentify who you truly are by identifying yourself as your body or your achievements or your possessions. 
Then you identify people who have accomplished less as inferior, and your self-important superiority causes you to be constantly offended in one way or another. This misidentification is the source of most of your problems, as well as most of the problems of humankind. Feeling special leads us to our self-importance. With the self as a focal point, you sustain the illusion that you are your body, which is a completely separate entity from all others. This sense of separateness leads you to compete rather than cooperate with everyone else. Ultimately, it's a no-match with spirit and becomes a huge obstacle to your connection to the power of intention. In order to relinquish your self-importance, you'll have to become aware of how entrenched it is in your own life. Ego is simply an idea of who you are that you carry around with you. As such, it can't be surgically removed by having an egoectomy. This idea of who you think you are will persistently erode any possibility you have of connecting to intention. What follows are seven steps for overcoming the hold that ego has on you. Here are seven suggestions to help you transcend ingrained ideas of self-importance. All of these are designed to help prevent you from falsely identifying yourself with this self-important ego of yours. One, stop being offended. The behavior of others isn't a reason to become immobilized. That which offends you only weakens you. If you're looking for occasions to be offended, you'll find them at every turn. This is your ego at work convincing you that the world shouldn't be the way that it is. Being offended creates the same destructive energy that offended you in the first place and leads to attack, counterattack, and ultimately war. 2. Let go of your need to win. You are not your winnings or your victories. You may enjoy competing and have fun in a world where winning is everything, but you don't have to be there in your thoughts. There are no losers in a world where we all share the same energy source. All you can say on a given day is that you performed at a certain level in comparison to the levels of others on that particular day. But today is another day with other competitors and new circumstances to consider. Be the observer, noticing and enjoying it all without needing to win a trophy. Be at peace and match up with the energy of intention. And ironically, although you'll hardly notice it, more of those victories will show up in your life as you pursue them less. 3. Let go of your need to be right. When you let go of the need to be right, you're able to strengthen your connection to the power of intention. But keep in mind that ego is a determined combatant. I've seen people willing to die rather than let go of being right. I've seen people end otherwise beautiful relationships by sticking to their need to be right. I urge you to let go of this ego-driven need to be right by stopping yourself in the midst of an argument and asking yourself, do I want to be right or happy? When you choose the happy, loving, spiritual mode, your connection to intention is strengthened. These moments ultimately expand your new connection to the power of intention. The universal source will begin to collaborate with you in creating the life you were intended to live. 4. Let go of your need to be superior. Let go of your need to feel superior by seeing the unfolding of God in everyone. Don't assess others on the basis of their appearance, achievements, possessions, and other indices of ego. When you project feelings of superiority, that's what you get back, leading to resentments and ultimately hostile feelings. These feelings become the vehicle taking you further away from intention. 5. Let go of your need to have more. The universal source is content with itself, constantly expanding and creating new life, never trying to hold on to its creation for its own selfish means. It creates and lets go. As you let go of ego's need to have more, you unify with that source. You create, attract to yourself, and let it go, never demanding that more come your way. As an appreciator of all that shows up, you learn the powerful lesson St. Francis of Assisi taught us. It is in giving that we receive. By allowing abundance to flow to and through you, you match up with your source and guarantee that this energy will continue to flow. 6. Let go of identifying yourself on the basis of your achievements. This may be a difficult concept if you think you are your achievements. Nevertheless, stay tuned to this idea. The power of intention which brought you into existence and which you're a materialized part of. The less you need to take credit for your achievements, and the more connected you stay to the seven faces of intention, the more you're free to achieve and the more will show up for you. It's when you attach yourself to those achievements and believe that you alone are doing all of those things that you leave the peace and the gratitude of your source. And seven, let go of your reputation. Your reputation is not located in you. It resides in the minds of others. 
Therefore, you have no control over it at all. If you speak to 30 people, you'll have 30 reputations. Connecting to intention means listening to your heart and conducting yourself based on what your inner voice tells you is your purpose here. If you're overly concerned with how you're going to be perceived by everyone, then you've disconnected yourself from intention and allowed the opinions of others to guide you. This is your ego at work. It's an illusion that stands between you and the power of intention.